Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem matrix diagonal sum. Even though this is an easy one, it can be a little tricky to code it up in a pretty like concise way. So I'm really gonna break down my thought process for you in this problem. And by the end of the video, I really want you to feel like you could have solved this problem by yourself. So we're given a square matrix and we want to return the sum of the diagonals. So just to blow this up a little, we can see here we have this diagonal, I guess this is called the primary diagonal, and we also have the secondary diagonal. And at this point, a naive thing to do would be to just jump into the code and try to think about what variables we're gonna do, how we're gonna be iterating through like the grid. Are we just gonna iterate over the entire grid? Maybe that would be n squared. That's not a bad thought to have though. And honestly, if you can just jump into the code and solve this problem, that's not a bad idea. But if you can't, I definitely recommend just looking at the picture and actually thinking about the problem. Don't just stare at it and do nothing. The first step is a pretty easy one. Let's just try to see what would the total be for this example. It's pretty simple. Let's just go value by value. We would start here. That's one plus the next value. We're going down and to the right. Now we have five and then we continue down here to nine and then we're pretty much done. We're out of bounds. We can't really go any further. So we notice some observations immediately. This diagonal is of length three. And at this position, we're starting at zero, zero, and then we're going to the next position, which is one, one, next position, which is two, two, and just keep going like that until we go out of bounds, which we will know we went out of bounds because really we're only iterating n times where n is one of the dimensions of the square matrix. So pretty straightforward there. This pretty much tells me that we can calculate this by creating a loop, a for loop or a while loop where we have maybe I as the index and to access like each value, we just say matrix at index I and the second index is also going to be index I. So pretty simple there. Now let's go to the secondary diagonal. I guess we could start over here or we could start over here. Which one do you think is better? Are there any trade-offs we could make? Well, immediately I would personally rather start over here because yes, these two positions do have a different column, but they actually have the exact same row. And the next value is also gonna have the same row. The next value here is also gonna have the same row. So I'd rather start from over here. So we're starting here all the way at the right. And as we go to the next position, we're kind of doing a similar thing where we started at row I and then we go to row I plus one. But what about the column? It's obviously we're doing the opposite here, right? Column is two, but for the next value over here, now the column is being decremented. So that's something we'll have to keep in mind. And then we'll get to the last value seven and let's assume we added them up as we were doing it. So plus three, plus five, plus seven, we got a total of 30. But when we look at the solution, the actual output is 25 which just reminds us that we double counted this value over here, this five, we double counted it. So that's just something we have to remember. It's probably something you know when you first read the problem, but sometimes it can slip your mind. So once we do all of this, we have to subtract this value or just not add it in the first place. In my opinion, it's easier to subtract it after the fact because this is obviously always going to be in the middle, right? When these two lines intersect, it's gonna be usually in the middle. So how can we kind of calculate that? Is it possible for us to exactly calculate that middle value? I just cleaned this up a little bit, but obviously it's the halfway point, right? We take the halfway point of this dimension, which will give us this, because if you take two and divide it by two, you get one. And we take the halfway point of this, you take two, divide it by two, you get one. And I think we wouldn't actually use the two value, we would use the length of the matrix. The length of this is obviously three. Three divided by two will also round down to one. Well, assuming we are rounding down. So obviously that's what we would wanna do. But this only seems to work in the odd case, right? If our dimension is odd because our dimension is currently of length three, does this also work for even dimensions like four? Let's test it out. So I just drew a four by four matrix over here. Now I'm gonna draw a line going from the top right going down. 
So obviously these are the four cells that that's going to visit. Let's try the other diagonal now, starting from here, we're here, then here, then here, and then here. Did you notice something? You probably did if you have eyes that these two lines don't intersect each other when the grid is of an even dimension. I don't know that because I'm smart. I know that because I have decent problem solving skills because I spent a lot of time building up these habits. So now we realize that we'll be iterating like this, iterating like this, and if the grid is odd length, we're going to find the middle value and subtract it from our total. Our total was 30. We're going to minus five. Then we get 25. And clearly that is the result that they were expecting. And I'm going to end up solving this problem with just a single loop that's going to iterate n times. And we didn't really need any extra memory. So the time complexity is going to be big O of n. Memory complexity is going to be constant. So now let's code this up. So we know we're calculating the sum. So I'm going to create a variable for that result. And then we're just going to start iterating through the array. We know we're probably going to need the index. So I'm going to say for i in range, the length of this matrix. And then we want to total stuff up. So let's start with the primary diagonal. How do we get that? That was the straightforward part. It's always going to be at index i at index i. And then we just take that and add it to the result. Now, what about the secondary diagonal? Well, let's start with what we know. We know it's always going to be in the same row as the primary diagonal. So we're going to start at index I for the row. What about the column? We know initially it's going to be the length of matrix minus one. We know that's what it's initially going to be. And next time it's going to be minus one again and minus one again and minus one again. Do you know a way we can repeatedly do a minus one operation? Well, with a loop, that's what loops are for. Can we use this loop or do we have to create a second loop to do this? We can actually use this loop because what we can say here is length of matrix minus one minus I because I is already being incremented, but we want to use it in a negative way. So we subtract that value. So this is going to be the index of the column of the secondary diagonal, not the row. Okay. And now finally, we are ready to go ahead and return our result. But we know that we might have to subtract from it. Now we could do that in like an if statement up over here. And that's perfectly fine. But the way I like to code, I, I like to personally use a lot of ternary operators when like it's possible and it makes sense. And I think in this case it does because we might want to subtract by zero or we might want to subtract by this value, the matrix value all the way in the middle. So N divided by two and N divided by two here. The reason I'm doing double slashes is because in Python by default, it does decimal division. So I want to do integer division here. But in other languages, I think most languages by default do integer division division where we round down. That's what we want to do here. But we only want to subtract this value if n modded by 2 is positive, is 1. If n is odd, in other words. Otherwise, we are going to subtract 0. And that is all of the code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. Well, I just failed an easy problem. Did you catch my mistake? I tried using n as the length of the matrix before I actually created that variable. So let's do that up here. I'm going to say n is going to be equal to the length of the matrix. And since we already used uh, the length of the matrix down here, I'm just going to replace that with n to make this a bit more concise and then rerun this. And now it does work. I personally wouldn't pay attention to this runtime. I don't know how you can speed it up. But if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. I just released a new review feature that I'm going to be actively working on. So I would love your feedback on that. And I'll see you soon.